And also a spiritual scholar warrior, Dr. Oba Tashak is with us as well. Uh, bring us up to date, because you were the one who, who actually uh, broke the news about her trans, uh, um, missing. Right. Well, I mean, um, yeah, Carl, I received a call from several people who have normal conversations with uh, Stigmet during the course of, um, of, of the weekend, and they were unable to reach her. So um, I was asked if I could try to reach out to her, uh, just as I was asked um, four years ago regarding uh, Dr. Welsing. And I called the Baltimore uh, Police Department and asked them to do a wellness check. And uh, about an hour after I placed the call, a police officer called me back and informed me that they had um, found that she had transitioned uh, in her apartment. So that's essentially uh, all we know. Um, she was... Uh, and what day was this, Tony? Well, uh, based on what they were able to observe when they were in the apartment, that it appears as though she passed on Monday. And uh, we do know, I was able to find out that she had a conversation with her, her uncle, her 91-year-old uncle who lives in Chicago, on Sunday. So uh, it appeared uh, as though she passed sometime between Sunday and Monday. So the one thing that I am uh, fortunate about is the fact that uh, she didn't lie there for an extended period of time. And I'm, I'm really saddened by the fact that, um, that she died uh, alone. Uh, she wasn't married, didn't have any children. And, you know, I, I'm really hurt and, and, and sorrowful that uh, a powerful, a brilliant, uh, significant sister um, had to, to die in such a manner. So, you know, uh, so we're trying to pick up the pieces and move forward. I've been in contact with their family in Arkansas and Texas regarding uh, the next steps. So I'm waiting for them to make some decision, and I will keep uh, you and the WOL family informed. Tony, do we know if it was COVID? Because, you know, a lot of times when we hear of death, no, I, doubt, I, doubt it seriously. I doubt it seriously. Uh, she had said on Friday, I spoke with a couple of people who had communicated with her on Friday, and that she, uh, she wasn't feeling well. She had uh, some sinus uh, issues, uh, pretty chronic sinus issues over the last several years. And since uh, COVID became a, uh, a serious issue, uh, Nana Sigmet stayed in her house. She did not, she did not left her house in at least four months. Uh, she was very serious about avoiding interacting with people. And, and so I, I can probably say with certainty that it was not COVID related. Um, you know, I, I am just feeling sad because her loss mirrors in so many ways, uh, the loss of Dr. Welsing. And I, I do know that on a, on a personal level, she was disappointed at um, her relationship with, with some people, some organizations and businesses who, who uh, left her in the lurch. Um, and um, I think she was in pretty good health, uh, but she was working, she was working hard. She was uh, just, just tired, and um, I can't say for certain uh, what her cause of death was, but I, I'm saddened that uh, she left us uh, so soon, she was 74 years old, and that uh, she had uh, a couple of, of books that she was in the process of, of um, producing. I was, I was going to publish her book on uh, post-traumatic slavery disorder. We, uh, that's, in the ed that's into the editor now. We were hoping to have that book out uh, early next year. She had another publication that is at the printer and had mentioned to me when I spoke with her last week, that she was going to write a book about her grandmother, uh, who she uh, has uh, taken on a lot of the traits and qualities of her grandmother. So uh, I don't know what the status of those publications are, but uh, I am hopeful that we will be able to retrieve uh, those documents and at least uh, publish some material so that the world will have a better understanding of uh, the great spirit that has left us. You mentioned that there was a lot of similarities between Dr. Francis Crest Wilson and we have uh, Dr. Wilson's sister, Lauren Crest Love, is with us on hold. Lauren? Ah. Uh, 
I first want to, with the entire community, uh, shed my deepest sorrow for the loss of Pat. I was just shocked, just shocked to hear that another giant, a colossal giant, has left us. And uh, I mean, I almost feel like the, I felt with the loss of my sister suddenly. Uh, Francis and, and Pat Newton were very close. Uh, Pat was a giant in her own right. I remember back in the 80s, early 80s, when she had the courage to have a symposium in Baltimore on AIDS and had uh, the doctor from California who first discovered uh, AIDS as one of her guests and a brilliant uh, uh, researcher who did the uh, uh, Zeers Miles, who did the early research on AIDS to discover AIDS as a man-made disease. And she brought a lot of difficulty on her head for doing that kind of exposure. So again, thanks to Tony, and I heard him mention that he was the early person who was a part of discovering Francis's uh, death. He, Tony sent me a ticket to come to uh, DC uh, as Fran was in the hospital. Uh, Tony, you are really one of those warriors out there for us. Uh, I am just so deeply saddened. And I know that um, for those of us who believe there is an afterlife, and I am one of those, that she has joined giants, Francis being one of them, my other sister Barbara Lawrence, the widow of Robert Lawrence, the first black astronaut, Pat has joined a host of others, and we will expect some of her blessings on us. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share with you all uh, our deepest sorrow. And thank you very much, Carl, for your continued great work. Thank you. Well, thank you, and thank you for sharing the Dr. Wilson with us for all these years. Thank you, Lauren. Well, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Peace. We're coming up on a peace. We're coming up on a break, uh, and when we come back, uh, no. Well, uh, how much time? Oh, okay. Okay. Let, let, let me let me let me go to Dr. Oba Deshaka before I let him go, because Dr. Oba Deshaka, I want to get your thoughts about uh, about Dr. Pat Newton. Yeah, it's really sad to hear this uh, beautiful sister. Uh, I have a lot of cherished memories about her. We're both Leos. I, I have four planets. She had five. Now, you want to talk about somebody who was strong. She was a force of nature. <laughs> she was no joke. The work that she did in terms of the impact of slavery on our people to the present day was pioneering because she shared with me uh, a lot of her findings on um, the institution of enslavement and how it affected black people in Maryland. And she had whole groups of families that uh, had, you know, gone through all kinds of stuff. And she had an insight into enslavement that you don't normally find in any of the history books or anything like that. And, and being a psychiatrist and then having an African mindset, she could see things that a lot of people in her profession uh, did not see. Um, I had a chance to uh, interchange with her in ASCAT Association, the study of classical African civilization, and got to see her, um, you know, wake people up with her insights. I recall one time where John Henry Clark, Professor John Henry Clark, was speaking uh, in New York. It was a, an event sponsored by the National Black United Front. I was national vice chair of, and John was speaking. And um, John said, I start with the subject, depart from it, and come back. And Pat was sitting next to me, and she said, that's concentric logic, <laughs> as opposed to linear logic. And um, so when I wrote a book, it's called Return to the African Mother Principle, Male and Female Equality, 
I quote Pat. I said, I do. Hang on a second, Dr. Tushaka. We've got to take a short break here. We're closing on the top of the hour. So some of our stations have to identify themselves down the line. I'll let you finish your thought on the other side. Folks, you can join us as well. 800-450-7876. Tony Brown is here. Also, Professor Small, right here on 1450. W-O-L, where information is power. If you're in debt to the IRS, there's good news. Optima Tax Relief can help you resolve your tax debt right from the safety of your own home. Optima's award-winning team works with you online and over the phone so you don't have to leave the comfort of your home to put your tax problems to rest. Optima's A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau and standing by, ready to help you today. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-799-0977. 800-799-0977. Optima Tax Relief. For details, visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. What do Mick Jagger, Barbara Walters, and Star Jones all have in common? They've all suffered from something called heart valve disease. Heart valve disease affects 11 million Americans, and if left untreated, can lead to death. Unfortunately, less than one in four Americans have much knowledge of this disease that kills more than 25,000 people every year. The good news is that if heart valve disease is treated, patients can recover and live long, happy, and productive lives. But in order to treat heart valve disease, you need to know if you have it. If you or your loved ones are over the age of 65, have been treated with radiation to the chest, have been diagnosed with a heart murmur, or have a history of heart disease, it's time to listen to your heart. Ask your doctor today about screening for heart valve disease. A message sponsored by Heart Valve Voice U.S. For more information about the symptoms and treatment for valve disease, go to heartvalvevoice-us.org. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. Um, we'll probably stay together. Probably? <laughs> it's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. WOL, Washington, D.C., an Urban One radio station, minority controlled and operated, serving the African-American community for over 40 years, and worldwide at WOLDCnews.com. <sighs> Welcome to the Carl Nelson Show on Washington, D.C.'s 1450 WOL Radio and live around the world on WOLDCnews.com. And thanks for staying with us, folks. Uh, we're discussing Dr. Pat Noon who made her transition uh, a few days ago. And she was with us on the air two weeks ago as well. So I don't know if you've been listening for a while, you remember who she is. And you should know from the work that she's, she's left us with. I'm going to call to get in on this discussion. 800-450-7876. Professor Smalls is here. And also Tony Brad is here. And before we left, we're speaking with uh, Dr. Oba Tashaka. So Dr. Tashaka, before we let you go, I'll let you finish your thought. Yeah, you know, her observation on Professor Clark's concentric logic uh, was a deep observation because that's uh, a feature of African philosophy and African-American deep thought. And that she framed it that way shows just how heavy she was because normally uh, the logic of uh, Aristotle and others is linear logic and it's used for control, one, two, three, four, and so forth. So uh, the final thing I'd say about uh, Dr. Newton is that She's one of the pioneering psychologists, in this case psychiatrists, who did groundbreaking work on the African mind and the African-American mind. And she particularly explored the dimension of the African-American mind and culture. So um, it's a great loss, and I agree with Brother Tony Browder that 
it's a shame that um, she had to die alone. But it, it, it's, it is good that it appears that she didn't die in pain or anything else, but that is, is more than unfortunate. But we have lost a great light, and I it's really hurt to hear it, saddened by it. All right. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Tashaka. We'll talk later. Thank you for, for sharing those thoughts with us. All right, folks, let's move on. We've got another caller online. We've got Dr. Renoko Rashidi joining us. Dr. Renoko Rashidi. We have the, hey, Dr. Small with us. Yes, sir. We have Dr. Small and, and Brother Tony Browder with us as well. So your thoughts yeah, on Dr. Yeah, Brother James Newton. and Brother Karak, how are you all doing? We were, man. Good, Brother Renoko. Good, Brother. Just, well, yeah, just, just hurting. The sentiments of everybody else, you know, shocked and hurt. Um and sad, but I also listened to uh, the interview with Dr. Finch yesterday, and he was talking about it, and he talked about death in the Nile Valley, I guess, point of view, as being a kind of a portal to another life, maybe even a high, and that was very comforting to me. And I think that in times like this, we seek comfort. So I felt better about that. Uh, Sekhmet Nana Kosawa, um, Dr. Newton, to me was what I consider a staple, like bread or water or something. She was just there in terms mm -hmm. of the African Senate movement, the world that I knew. I met her sometime, I guess it had to be in the middle 1980s, uh, and I think it was at a conference in Dallas, one of the Melanin conferences. And it wasn't long after that that she and um, another sister named Karen Devon Invited mm -hmm. myself and another brother <clears throat> named Belu <clears throat> Anomale to do a program in Baltimore. Velu is very important to us because he's one of the most important leaders of the people called the Dalits or Black Untouchables of India. And Belu lived in the United States at the time, and he was an advocate for the Dalits. And I was, too. I had just been to India, and somehow uh, Sekhmet... Uh, saw that, saw the connection, and invited us to come to Baltimore and do a presentation on the black untouchables of India. That's not something that happens every day. Unfortunately, it wasn't a very successful evening. It was a cold, snowy night, and not many people came. But And it was a, a big auditorium. That's one of the worst things. First thing is not to get paid. Second thing is to get heckled. And the third thing is to speak in a big room well, there are, hardly, there are very few people there. One of the people who was there was Francis Wilson. And I remember Dr. Wilson getting up and spending a lot of time talking about those issues. So I go back with the sister a long way. Very powerful, brilliant, uh, very blunt speaking. Uh, we were Facebook friends. We connected quite often. I'm used to seeing her face. She used to organize trips to the motherland. So... Yeah. yeah, she's a great loss, brother. But again, listening to Dr. Finch, I'm encouraged. She did a great, great work. And uh, just a tough sister. I miss her. Yeah. One other thing, one other thing, let me say this. Yeah. I think one of the most important things about her is she made sure that what I call the African centered movement wasn't just a boys' club. I think in the movement that we operate in, it's really dominated, Brother James and Karak can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's male dominant. And Dr. Right. Uh, Newton right. wasn't having that. We like to think that we come from, and we do come from a tradition where women were very, very important in the African world, but I'm, I'm sorry to say that we don't practice that as much as we should. We don't always, in my opinion, live up to I that ideal. And Dr. Newton wasn't having that. You could not overlook her or ignore her or disrespect her in, in any way. So she was, she was tough, man. I loved her. Thanks, Renoko. Thanks for sharing those thoughts with us. You all stay tuned. Yes, sir. 800-450-7876. Tony, uh, we have Paul on, on the line. Can you introduce Paul f to the audience for us? Brother Paul Abina is uh, based in the U.K., he is the creator of the timeline that you all have heard uh, me talk about so much. And back in the late 80s and 90s, Paul replicated 
in the UK what we were doing here in DC with IKG. So he brought over, I gave him my Rolodex and he brought over all the scholars that were known here, he brought to the UK, uh, especially Dr. Newton, Dr. Welsing, uh, James Paul, Renoko, everybody. So Paul, uh, welcome to the program, man. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, sir, very well. Paul, your, your thoughts about Dr. Newton? <laughs> um, makes me smile. Every time I think of her, she, she brings a smile to my face. As um, your last caller said, straight talking, funny, insightful, and put things right uh, right in front of you. So you couldn't, you, there was no, I, I'm, I'm a fighter, I'm a boxer, martial artist. And uh, in, in, the, in, in, in boxing where you cut the ring off to track down your opponent, uh, Setmet was like that. She truly lived to her name of Setmet, and uh, she was a fighter healer. So every time I think of her, it's a case of like, oh wow, if I'm if I'm going to go and talk to her about any issues, I'm going to meet myself. She's going to put myself right in in front of me. So that's how I think of her. And uh, I, even though with this sad loss, it's a powerful gain, ancestral gain on that level. Uh, for advice, for counsel, on that metaphysical level, she's there now. So I'm, I'm you know, that's someone who I can, I can look to and talk to any time I want. Yeah, interesting you say that, uh, 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 Professor uh, Small. Explain that to the audience. Yes. When you make a transition, what happens? You know, segment and I and, and Dr. Hunter just uh, more, about two weeks ago less than two weeks now, we did a, a, a webinar on African sacred science. And one of the pieces that I spoke on was called Alowo. And it's a Yoruba term for when we go and we come. And I remember Segment asked me to, she liked that, and she asked me to, to explain that further. And in the ancient Yoruba tradition, uh, the process of Alowo is that we come to earth in a family. And when we pass, it's a concept of reincarnation. The energy goes back to the universe. And that energy then is reconfigured with even more strength and then come back to us in the form of a baby in that same bloodline or some psycho-spiritual relationship to the bloodline because the African believe the baby don't just have to be genetically yours. It can be psycho-spiritually yours, meaning you can adopt the child that has no genetic relationship to you, but all the genetic, the genetic construct of that child through your teaching, through your behavior, through your love, and through your spiritual connections. And so I believe that segment's work was finished. She may not have thought it was finished. We may not have thought it was finished. And because the suddenness, um, I had to do tears for four hours yesterday, and I've never done that to anybody in my life. I just couldn't stop crying. You know, we've been comrades for decades, um, and I believe that she has ascended back, as Charles was saying, through that portal, that energy that lived in the body that we are now going to take care of and stop, have some money so far. There was an energy that lived there that was segment. That energy has now returned to the greater universe of energy, and it will come back again as an even greater force of energy via the birth of another child. And so our concept of, of, of death is not a finality as the European concept of death is. We believe that we go and we come and that we are all aspects of the divine totality. And so we simply rotate when the, 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 what we were sent here to do, but the energy we were given is expended then we go back and get renewed with greater energy, with a greater expansion, depending on how well you did your work here, and then you will come back again. So we're gonna see segment real soon. Somebody's gonna have this baby real soon, and it's gonna be segment. Uh, we're coming up on a break. Paul, I know you're in the UK. If you can stay with us, please do so. But I gotta ask Tony this, because the last time Tony had a conversation when Chadwick Boseman passed, and you said he passed because his, his work, he had completed his mission on this planet. So my question to you is, did, 
uh, Dr. Newton complete her work? Do you think she completed her work? And if you can explain that to the audience, and I'll let you tell us about that after the short break, right here on 1450. W-O-L, where information is power. From faulty breakers to broken windows, to leaky pipes, roofs, and water heaters, homes and businesses around the country can't work until the pros do. That's why Lowe's created credit programs that work for pros. With everyday 5% savings on eligible purchases, plus through October 31st, 60 days promotional financing on your Lowe's business account, or extended terms on eligible account receivables. Learn more in-store or online at Lowe'sforpros.com. Putting money back in your pocket. Just one more reason Lowe's is the new home for pros. Subject to credit approval U.S. only. Introducing touch-free payments from PayPal, a safe way for your customers to pay. Simply download the PayPal app and display your own unique QR code for your customers to scan. Whether you're a market seller, I'll take two tomatoes and a cucumber. poodle pamperer, <laughs> piano tuner, or plumber, <laughs> signing up to accept touch-free payments for your business is easy. Touch-free QR code payments. No seller fees until 2021. Not applicable to PayPal here transactions. Other fees may apply. Shop safe with PayPal. It's the JCPenney Friends and Family Sale, and everyone is invited. Hurry and save up to 50% on select styles from brands you love to live in, like St. John's Bay, a a and Les Claiborne. Plus, take an extra 30% off with coupon. Easy savings for anyone and everyone. And if you're on the go, enjoy contact-free curbside pickup without leaving your car. Spread the love. Share the savings. JCPenney. Offers end Sunday, 10-4. Conditions and exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. In November's election, we have two U.S. Senate races and two strong choices for one critical move to move our state forward. Democrats John Ossoff and Reverend Raphael Warnock, they represent a new direction. They represent hope for us all. Reverend Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff know that health care is a human right. They both will stand up to the rich and powerful interests in Washington to protect those with pre-existing conditions and those affected by the pandemic racing across our community. Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff's strong commitment to our community is why both President Barack Obama and Stacey Abrams have strongly endorsed both of them. In November's election, we have two choices to be a voice for our community, to represent everyone in our state not just the powerful, and to move our country forward. Vote for John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock for Senate. Paid for by Majority Forward, which is responsible for the content of this ad. MajorityForward.com. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. Any ad counsel. Follow us on Instagram at WOLDC News. And now, and now back, 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 back to the Carl Nelson Show. On Washington, D.C.'s 1450. 1450 WOL Radio. And I'm just staying with us, folks, who are doing a tribute to Dr. Patricia Newton. Again, most of you heard her here about two weeks ago, and uh, she made her transition, they say Monday, and what is it now? Today's Wednesday, and with us, we have Tony Browder, and also we have uh, Dr. Small. We also have uh, Paul Obina. Paul's in uh, the UK. So, Tony, you, with the last time uh, we had a discussion about somebody making a transition was actor uh, Chadwick Boseman, and, and you said that Chadwick had completed his mission. So my question to you was, uh, did Dr. Newton complete her mission? Well, uh, let me echo the words of, of Dr. Wilson. Dr. Wilson told us that everyone has a cosmic assignment. Everyone was born uh -huh. for a specific purpose. And when we fulfill that purpose, we move on. We leave this life to prepare for our next assignment. So all I can say is that uh, Sister Sigmet uh, did more in 74 years of life that many people do in two lifetimes. So I can only mm -hmm. surmise that maybe it was her time. Uh, but I can also say, Carl, just, just on a personal note, that um, what every person living should take from, from this experience is that we must begin now to get our affairs in order. We don't know when we're leaving. So we need to make sure that those that we love, 
we know whether or not we want to be buried, whether or not we want to be cremated. They should know where our bank accounts are. They should know what our insurance policy is. Uh, they should be. They should not have to worry about numerous needless things. Uh, because we didn't take care of the work that we needed to do. Now, many people are resistant to doing this because people are afraid of death. They're afraid of, think if they talk about death and start planning for death, that they're going to die. So as, as Renoko echoed the sentiments of uh, the comments of, of, of Charles Finch yesterday, with a now valley centered understanding of life after life, there is no death. We come back. And the quality of life we experience when we come back is based on the quality of life that we live. So that's my understanding of, of the world in which we live. Uh, and that understanding has been reinforced within my mind, within my soul, over the past 12 years that I've been working, excavating these three tombs in, in Egypt. I now know beyond a shadow of a doubt. I'm now clearer today and at any point in my life that this is reality, and I wish in my heart of hearts that more people would come to understand this reality and prepare for the next life by living a meaningful and righteous life in this way. Gotcha. Absolutely. Uh, Paul, Absolutely. Is Paul, you still with us in, in the UK? Yes, uh, yes, yes, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Before, before we let you go, Paul, uh, are you in London or where, where are you in the UK? I'm I'm in the north of England. I'm close to Manchester in the north okay. of England. Okay, Marsai. That's where the brothers hang out in in Manchester. We've got a lot of listeners in the UK. We've got uh, some <laughs> yeah, from yeah, Croydon, yeah, right. and, yeah, Croydon, South London. Yeah. Uh, that's South London. Tottenham, North London, East Enders as well. All listening, checking yeah. in. So, uh, you're up in there in <laughs> Manchester. Well, anything you'd like to add before you let us go? We let you go. Um, just uh, 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 Submit was inspirational. Um, like I said, can't can't go, can't think about it without without a smile. Um, I, I had a wonderful experience in Ghana when uh, with Professor Small and Submit were talking to the uh, group to a, a, a group who were on tour, and uh, listening to those two. Um, banter, having an interaction, talking about things which, you know, we're, they're not written about, we weren't presenting about, it was their personal view on, uh, the personal view on things. It was just fascinating. And uh, I was blessed because I, I, I got in contact with Seth Met due to, uh, we're talking to Dr. Welsing to bring her to the conference that we were putting on in Manchester in 1994. And, um, uh, Dr. Wilson declined. She didn't want to come. And so we have this uh, substitute, you know, second best, who happened to be segment. And uh, she absolutely slaughtered the... Uh, well, uh, we've got the, um, we got the uh, videotape of the actual presentation she did, and it was just mind-blowing. And she came to all four, uh, all four of the remaining conferences we did in that series, and she became the staple. Um, and... and more than held their own uh and just, just people loved her over here and uh she, just like i said very down to earth straight honest and and the, the way she went about her, her presentations and the way she talked to people was was priceless so i'm pleased to have known her as a friend and as a, a you know to have her as a counsel as well all right paul thank you don't be a stranger thank you for sharing those okay, thoughts then. with us all right. Oh, my, absolutely, absolutely my pleasure. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Paul Thank Collins brother, from Paul. Manchester. Love you, brother. Yeah. All right. 800-450-7876. Tony, we got Daryl with us. Can you introduce Daryl to the audience? Uh, brother Daryl is um, a judge in Houston, Texas. Uh, I met him uh, on a visit to um, Houston a number of years ago. He traveled to Kemet with us. He traveled to uh, Ghana recently with uh, Segmet. And he is the attorney for IKG and has also done uh, some legal work for Sister Sigmet. So I wanted him to come and share his experiences with that dear sister. Right. Daryl, welcome to WOL Radio. Well, thank you for having me. Your thoughts on Dr. Newton? Oh, uh, where can I begin? Um, you know, one of the things that come first to mind is that 
Uh, one of the old African proverbs, when an elder passes away, a library burns down. And this is a major library that has burned down. Uh, Dr. New was very special to me. Uh, not only was she my spiritual mother, but she was definitely a good friend. And, how, and just like how Professor Small says that we all are God's living a human experience, I want to add a little bit to that if I can. Uh, Dr. Newton was a guy living a superhuman experience, acting as a human. And she was very humane to many folks around her, specifically me. And one of the things I can say to her is that she loved her people more than she loved herself. Wow. When did you meet Dr. Newton? I was about the same time that I had the opportunity of uh, meeting Mr. Broder. So uh, just to give you a little bit of background, I was at the beginning stages of really diving deep into pre-colonial African history. And as you know, once you dig deep into that world, your mind expands, but your world becomes smaller. So many of you lose many, many friends, many colleagues, and many associates, and there's conversations that you cannot have with certain people. And Tony and uh, Dr. Newton were those people who I can counsel with, learn more with, and converse with on a level that I just couldn't converse with with others. So I am greatly indebted to Nana, to Professor Small, to everyone who has been an instrument in my life to help me to really learn more about our people. That's interesting you'd say that. And, and, and thank you for sharing that, because that is so true. Uh, Dr. Small, uh, amplify that for us, if you will. Because he was talking about giving the knowledge of, of self, and all of a sudden now he, he, his friend's uh, his circle changes. Amplify what he just this explains oh, and, 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 and I know Tony and the others can explain the same thing. That happened to all of us. Um, when you begin to come into this understanding, this body of knowledge about our ancestors, about our history, there is a, a, a counterculture, the white culture consciousness that is embedded in our people that immediately rejects and even sometimes attack the rise of African consciousness and culture in one of us and so you then move away from those people and they move away from you and so we, we many times don't think that of, of life as these cultural flows you know culture is the educational system of a people's wisdom and i think um Hilliard taught us that culture carries on the intergenerational transmission of this body of wisdom and when you begin to, and you've experienced it, Carl, to get into this body of knowledge, those who are in another cultural stream, they may look like us, but that cultural stream that have formed their consciousness make them to begin to abandon us, marginalize us in their lives, or even become oppositional to our moving towards this African cultural stream. But the one beautiful thing about it when you gain this body of knowledge, you know that your first responsibility is to be a servant to those who don't have the body of knowledge. Wow, mm -hmm. that's that's that is well put, Tony. I want you to, uh, to chime in on this as well because uh, what you're saying that negative energy is repelled, but you still yet you pick up some other positive energy. Well, you know, as I said, everyone comes here for a purpose. And what I've come to accept the fact is that those people who are living their purpose serve as a beacon of light for those who are in the darkness. And oftentimes yeah. what happens, those people will be marginalized, they'll be disparaged, they'll be dragged through the mud, and then when they are gone, everybody starts singing their praises. That appears to be uh, the, 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 the case more often than not. Uh, but... The reality is we are here for a purpose, and when you know that, when you live your life dedicated to purpose, that is all that matters. Right. All right. And, and the Yoruba system, Carl, they call it that everyone goes before God and get assigned their destiny and then become to fulfill that destiny. And in that system, we get a chance to reincarnate eight times in that destiny to complete it. So Segment's coming back, and probably sooner than later, more powerful than she was before she left. 
All right, I want to get into that, but we're going to take a short break. Daryl, I thank you for calling us and sharing your thoughts with us. We've got to take a short break, as I mentioned. Tony Brown, to stay with us as well, as well as Dr. Small, discussing Dr. Newton. 800-450-7876 gets you in. You want to talk about Dr. Newton, we'll take your calls after this quick break. Right here on 1450 WOL, where information is power. Is racial oppression addictive? If so, how does one recover? Now, more than ever, real answers to these questions are needed. Announcing a groundbreaking self-help workbook, Addicted to White, The Oppressed in League with the Oppressor by Dr. Jerome E. Fox, revealing the first step is for the oppressed to break their addiction to the values of their oppressor. Get Addicted to White, The Oppressed in League with the Oppressor to learn the entire roadmap to recovery. Now available online at Amazon.com. Celebrate black history 365 days a year. Let's salute past and present leaders and role models and continue to work together for a better future for African Americans as well as all Americans. This message sponsored by Marjul Homes Incorporated, providing services to developmentally disabled residents for over 25 years in the D.C. area. For service or to donate your time or resources, call 202-588-7256. That's Marjul Homes Incorporated in D.C. where they're leaders and role models. Black Lives Matter. I'm Jewel Burks, ambassador for Gold Series. Because of the work I put in behind the scenes, I'm good enough to be in whatever room I'm in. Youngest person in the room? Check. Only woman? No problem. Only black woman? All good. My work is my passion and my purpose. I'm Jewel Burks, managing partner of Collab Capital. How do you work? Gold Series hair products work hard like you, providing deep moisture to strengthen and protect your hair from within. We work hard while you work wonders. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man, your worst man, you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. While one in three adults has pre-diabetes, with early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. 1450 WOL. And now, and now back, 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 back to the Carl Nelson Show. On Washington, D.C.'s 1450. 1450 WOL Radio. And thanks for staying with us, folks. Discussing Dr. Patricia Newton, who made a transition uh, on Monday. Dr. Newton, of course, was here two weeks ago. She's one of our power talkers. We have with us uh, uh, Brother Tony Browder, and also we have uh, Professor Small with us. And before that, the question Dr. Small was saying that, and I guess Tony said it too, and Dr. Finch as well, that it's gonna, she's going to come back. So if you ex can you explain that to the audience? Because it sounds like you're talking about reincarnation, but I'm not quite sure if that's what it is. Um, well, the comedic word is rehemi mesu, or the repetition of the birth. And anyone who has a, a real understanding of, of that culture will look at the papyrus of Ani, um, a 18th dynasty uh, papyrus of a scribe. And in that papyrus, at the scene of the weighing of the soul of the scribe Ani, you see a symbol above the scale of Maat where Ani's heart is being weighed. And that symbol is mesconet. It's also referred to as a birthing brick. So the question is asked, why would there be a birthing brick at the time that the soul is giving a testimonial to how they live their life unless that soul was about to be reborn into another life? So when you look at uh, now Valley history and culture, when you look at West African history and culture through the lens of African people, not through the lens of, of uh, not through a religious lens or a distorted European lens, you will see a people who were so aligned to the um, the cosmic flow of nature, the rising and setting, the cyclical nature of, of the sun, the planets, the stars, every aspect of life, and they realize that we are a part 
of the cyclical nature of the universe. We come with an assignment, we fulfill that assignment, and when that assignment is completed, then we go into the ancestral realm and we will be reborn as a child along that same ancestral line. That is the process, but our memory and understanding of that process has been erased. And so I'm I'm pleased that there there are souls like uh, my brother Small, there are souls like Renoka Rashidi and and, and Lynn Jeffries and Sister Segment and Dr. Wilson, who model that. Souls who come here for a purpose, and they are on point, and nothing takes them off point. So if we can begin to look at the trajectory of their lives from the position of this life is a continuation of the previous life and is setting them up for the next life, then we'll have a greater understanding of what life is all about, and we will not waste our time arguing about foolish things and make the most of every single breath we take. All right, before we bring on Sister Amma, uh, Dr. Small, does this mean that when we make our transition, will we see Dr. Dr. Newton, will we we see Dr. Wilson and our ancestors? Absolutely. Let me tell you something that happened to me. My grandma, who was a root lady, uh, an indigenous traditional priest in South Carolina, and those from the South, we know who a root lady is. When she was passing, my mom called and said, come, because she may not be here. So I jumped on a plane immediately, went down to South Carolina straight from the airport in the same clothes I was wearing when I was doing the interview of the Geraldo Rivera that moment my mom called. I walked into the hospital room. Everybody was noticing me. I said, oh, God, I got here too late. Mama's gone. And then I realized, no, they were staring at me because they were watching this TV show. Get in the room. Mom tells everybody, leave. I want to talk to James. And, you know, we can't pronounce in Gala the J. We make it a G. And so I said, oh, she says, take me out of here. I said, oh, don't worry, baby. I'll tell my mother now that we get ready. We'll take you back home to the house, and you can die there. She said, no, I don't want to go back there. Take me up out of here. I said, ma'am. She said, take me up out of here. I said, oh, my God, I suddenly realized, he said, take my spirit out of this body. I was shaking. I didn't know what to do because they hit me that this lady had given this to me. As I walked over to the bed, put my arms under her arms, pulled her breasts up against me, pulled her back up on the pillow. She took a deep breath and smiled and said, thank you. And she left the next day out of that body. But she knew that I'm not the body I'm in. I'm the energy that's in the body. And she's been in my world ever since. You know, it's it's deep. Our culture is so deep. That's why when we come back to it, others run away from us. Because it's something else. Yeah, that's a deep story right there. Uh, Carl, can I have a a, a brief testimonial with you all? I made my first trip to Egypt 40 years ago with Dr. Ben. And on that trip, I had an adventure in the pyramid where I was essentially in the pyramid by myself with all the lights out for about an hour. And so I spent that time meditating in the pyramid and had some incredible visions, had some incredible experiences. I did not realize until until 12 years ago that one of the visions that I had when I was in the pyramid, in the king's chamber of the pyramid in 1980, one of the visions I had, which didn't mean anything to me at the time, was in the tomb of Karakamen, which I have been wow. restoring for the past 12 years. So as I reflect on my 40-year career of traveling to Kemet, I am convinced that I have been there before. I am convinced mm-hmm. as... As Charles Finch said yesterday, Charles started calling me Karak about four years ago, saying that I was a reincarnation of Karak, and I resisted mm-hmm. that because I thought it was ego. I thought it was ego. But I have come to accept the fact that I am doing things that I have under normal direction. I have no business doing the things that I've been doing all these years. But, and particularly well, but, but, when I reflect, hold on one second, Jay, but particularly when I reflect <laughs> on the fact that, that I have been charged with the responsibility of assisting souls make their transition. Sister Nana, uh, Sister Welsing, my mother, uh, Brother Ah, and others. So I've come to understand this is my life's work. This is what I'm supposed to be doing, and I accept that. 
and 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 this is is how I will live out this life, and I trust that it will prepare me uh, for the next life that I'm going to uh, live. Well, Tony, when I first saw the T-shirt, I thought that was your picture <laughs> on the T-shirt. Yeah. Okay. The other thing, Karakla, he was a priest. Yes. Yes. And you are in the role of the priest. You know, I'm in the craft. I know the craft. What you're doing, even in the Yoruba system, they would call you both Oba and Oya. Okay? One is the guardian of the gate to the cemetery, which means the realm of the ancestors, and the other is the guardian of the ancestral realm itself. And so you there. That's who you are. They gave you your assignment and, and prepared you in that pyramid. Because the spirit, people don't know. They, they come to all of us, but we are caught up in somebody else's cultural stream, so we can't receive them the way we should. Sometimes they can break through. But the more we move towards an African cultural and spiritual stream, the more they will ascend and let us communicate with them and they will communicate with us. We are eternal. There's only one existence. And now people in the the airway of West Africa call it Sobelisa, the totality of the universe as one. And we are all just aspect of the totality. And as we manifest into earth, it is to carry on the perfection of the totality. And that becomes our destiny. That's pretty deep. Tony, Sister Anna is here. Can you introduce her to the audience? Yes, I can. Um, when Dr. Welsing lay in the hospital bed, um, on life support, her sister Lauren said that Francis would not want to live like that, and that she and Francis didn't believe that death was the end of the journey, and she said that we need to let her go, take her off of life support, but I don't want to just pull the plug and let her go. There should be something that we can do to usher her soul into the next realm. And Sister Alma was in the room with, with us that evening and said, well, you know, I'm an Akaran priest. I have my things downstairs in the car. I can get them, and we can do the ritual to release her soul. And she did. So uh, as we think about how we can serve Sister Segmet's soul, uh, we're going to need to do the same thing for her. So I felt it was important that we have um, – sister with us to talk about this process of preparing the soul to move from this life into the next and i present to you uh, my dear sister ama sister ama welcome back to wol radio yes thank you thank you greetings everybody yes greetings, yes ma'am well, we're coming up, we're coming on a break but uh explain what you did when when tony uh told you the dr wilson was going to make a transition <laughs> Well, the really, the thing that I really did is said, oh, my goodness, <laughs> um, because, I mean, Dr. Welsing, I um, honor her so much, um, you know, in terms of she was one of the reasons why I even got into um, studying mental health and, um, and focusing on health and healing. And so to be at that moment, I was actually, to be honest, I was scared. I was like, what and how is this me doing this thing for Dr. Welsing? So I had to immediately get past my fears, and um, I called my elders to, to assist me and direct me into um, doing this work for, for um, Dr. Welsing. Um, and so it was very, it was very, very humbling. It was, if you could say, a scare of just being transparent, and, but I knew I had to do a work that pushed me beyond myself. Um, to, I, I tell you what, hang on a sec, because we're coming up on a break, and I want you, if you okay. can... Take us step by step what, what goes on so we'll, we'll get an understanding what you did okay. and what happens. 800-450-7876. You can join Sister Ama and also Brother Tony Browder and Dr. Small right here on 1450. W-O-L, where information is power.
celebrate black history 365 days a year. Let's salute past and present leaders and role models for African Americans as well as all Americans. This message courtesy of Lion Strategic, offering self-defense, personal preparedness, firearm safety training, and more. Call 240-917-0531, 240-917-0531, or visit them at lionstrategic.com. That's lionstrategic.com. Lion Strategic is on the air as a leader and role model for our youth. Have you been back to Burlington lately? Your store is now restocked, so hurry in for more unbelievable deals on amazing brands and styles at up to 60% off other retailers' prices every day. Stop back in to see the fabulous values you've come to love, with more arriving all the time. Whether it's back to school, work, or just back, head back into your Burlington today and start getting more value for less again. Burlington, love the deals. Hey, Dad, your prescription will be ready in just a minute. Hey, Dad, your laundry will be ready in just a minute. Dad, your lunch will be ready in just a minute. Hey, honey, why don't you take a minute? When you help care for a loved one, you give them as much time as you can, making sure they're safe and comfortable. But it's just as important that you take some time for yourself. At AARP, we can help with information and useful tips on how you can maintain a healthy life balance, care for your own physical and mental well-being, and manage the challenges of caring for a loved one. Because the better care you take of yourself, the better care you can provide for your loved one. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. You're there for them. We're here for you. Find free care guides to support you and your loved one at aarp.org slash caregiving. That's aarp.org slash caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ed Council. 1450 WOL, everywhere you are via our mobile app. And now, and now back, 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 back to the Carl Nelson Show. On Washington, D.C.'s 1450. 1450 WOL Radio. I'm actually staying with us, folks. Uh, I guess Tony Browder. Chemitologist and also Dr. Small, an educator, and also a griot, and Sister Arm is with us. Before we get back in, though, let me just remind you, uh, tomorrow, activist Gerald Sanders is going to join us. She's going to talk about the uh, Breonna Taylor case. If Today, uh, Breonna Taylor's boyfriend just filed a $10.5 million lawsuit against the Louisville Metropolitan Police, so I know she's going to mention that. Also, mystery man Mark Manheim will be here as well. So if you're in the DMV, tell all your friends to keep their radios locked right here on 1450 WOL. So, Sister Arm, take a step-by-step -step with the, the, the after the, through the transition, what is it that you do? Okay, so basically, first I have to say, in terms of talking about transition, and definitely have to give acknowledge to Nana Sekhmet um, for her transition, for her spirit, for her work. We say Madasi, we say Twa'u, we say Asante Sana for that. So when we're talking about what happens when somebody passes, understanding and the quick, quickly is in African context is that we have what we call stages of life or rites of passages from birth, adolescent, adult, elder, ancestor, just loosely. And so it marks our development on this earth and, and our relationship to the creator and nature. So that one, what everyone else has said before, that the death that we've been socialized to think is in the Western world is not what it actually is. It's a continuation of life. And so you're acknowledging this unthing that we don't know. Sometimes we call it mysteries of life. And as it relates to other things, some people may call it blood mystery. Um, so where the, this component between death and life, we really don't exactly know how it actually happens or when it happens, but it happens. So what some of the things that we do or generally um, that's done to prepare a person to go back to the land of what we call in the Khan tradition, Insamando, Insamando, um, of Insamanko, which means the ancestors. So in a general sense, some common things that are done once somebody's beginning to transition is they may be given or can be given their last sip of water, um, that which we are part of. We are part of water. And so oftentimes that's done as well as um, washing the body, giving the body the, the, the last wash, just like we are in the amniotic fluid to create that which we were born in. We pour libation. Um, 
and also there's other certain things like Nana Segment was also a a a a a chief. She was a queen mother. So there's other things that will that can be done um, as well. And sometimes it's, uh, it's usually um, a week before that uh, before announcement is made that the person actually passes because there's a lot of organizing that goes on um, in in planning the transition for someone. Um, the other thing um, that's done is that, that that first 40 days, there's a lot of preparation that's done. People are doing prayers. They are um, mourning. They're fasting. Um, they need to make an altar. So one of the things that anybody simply can do to even acknowledge not a segment or anyone, you can, a white cloth, a glass of water, and a candle, and put in a particular place. Sometimes they put it by the door um, because they say people travel. Those first 40 days, people are making their, they're making their last rounds. They're transitioning. They, they're coming to people in dreams. They're getting messages and things like that. So you just have a safe space and say, you, you can go, you can go, all right? You can go safely and transition all as well. So also during the 40 days, we don't necessarily call their name. Um, because sometimes people may have um, making the separation depending on how they may pass or who they are. Um, you want you don't want to call them so that they stay what they call in the inner plane between the physical world and the spiritual world. You want to make sure that they go. So that's where you you're taking care of all of the the um, the final details. You're beginning to resolve if there's any family issue or community issue. Um, any debt, any of those things, you want to then, as a as a family and community, to to prepare. So um, those are just some of the general things that are done because everybody, as we what uh, Professor Smalls talked about in the contradiction, we have this called inkabia or our destiny or our mission. It's the same thing. We all have a destiny and mission, and um, those things are revealed or reviewed um, just the same way. Is done in um, when you talk about the weighing of the heart in Ghana and a lot of the other traditions. And you hear um, Dr. Finch talks about this as well in terms of the migration that came out of Kemet and we dispersed throughout the rest of the continent. So you see, basically, it's the same, the same things that are done. And we always are acknowledging there may be a special meal that is prepared. You, there's something that's done in the 40 days. You do the the forty day because we at the forty day that person is now an ancestor and can do work on our behalf. There's something that's done at the year. Sometimes um, I believe it's three years, and then sometimes ten years, just to acknowledge that person. You're feeding. It's a sense of um, reciprocity, if you will. You're still acknowledging and giving energy to them being an ancestor, so that they can do the work. Yeah, I want you, thank you for sharing that, um, Sister Alma. Uh, and I want Dr. Small and Tony to talk about this as well, because you mentioned that, that 40 days. So what is happening to, to, to the, her spiritual body during that 40-day 40 40 segment? What's going on there? Well, um, and to, oh, you want, if you want them to add, you want them to add to that? Yeah. Dr. Small Brother or Tony? James. Yeah, Brother James, go ahead. James might be yeah, on hold. Yeah. So, uh, well, <laughs> as Sister Amma articulated, uh, the okay, soul no, is reviewing. I'm still here, Tony. Okay. Uh, well, let me just say briefly, and then I'll pass it to you. The soul is reviewing its life. The soul is reviewing yeah. its journey, and it's preparing uh, to come into the hall of the double mind, where its heart, which is regarded as the seat of the soul, is weighed opposite the feather mind, and they declare their innocence. And that then paves the way for them to stand before a star who would then determine the direction that they will proceed in in their next life. Yeah. So that was documented and practiced in the Nile Valley for at least 3,000 years, at least 3,000 years. Dr. Small? And the same system is practiced all over Africa. And the Nile Valley is our, our I always call it our senior shrine. Right now, just an announcement to the people. Um, once the announcement was made yesterday, Nana Tuda, who's one of our brothers, he holds a stool 
as a chief in a go-go kingdom in the Ashanti region, as uh, Dr. St. Met did, and I too hold a stool in that region. We've spoken to our king, Nanakoko Sapong, and so they started the rituals last night, and the priests and priestesses have come together with the chiefs, and the ritual will go on for the next 40 days. Um, there's going to be a stool that's going to be consecrated, the one that she was instilled upon there. And that stool is going to be blackened. She mm -hmm. can be there, but that stool will be placed in the ancestral sacred space um, mm -hmm. where they're kept. Some of this we are, as priests, are not to talk about publicly. Some of it we can talk about publicly. Mm -hmm. um, but they've already begun high sacred rituals in, in Ghana, in the Ashanti Kingdom, in, in our village of Agogo, um, where she was not only a queen mother, but she was a chief king. She had one of the highest female roles from our kingdom. There, I'm Nana Kofi Mpansa, the second of the Agogo school. And so we were not only brothers and sisters in the realm of the African-American struggle, but we are brothers and sisters in the realm of the Akan uh, chieftaincy or Nana tradition or Hini and Amandhini tradition. Now, let me ask you this, because it sounds like this is where the uh, Christians got, the, the, where they talk about going through the pearly gates and um, St. Peter, <laughs> and, and you, you asked if you all, were good or bad. All of it comes from us. All of it comes yeah, that's that, that's 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 what I'm, I'm discerning right now. It's so our uh, Christian brothers and sisters are listening. Uh, you know, this is this is where it came from, right? Yes. When they talk about purgatory, that period, transition period, that's our Chrissy die. That's our forty days. Okay. Um, so yes, these are mere fragments from the periphery of our system of understanding of the wisdom of the universe and how life functions. And, and talk to us, and maybe Sister Alma, uh, you know, they say that we must continue to mention their names to keep them alive. Is, is, can you explain that, Rachel? Well, yeah, well, one of the things, like I was mentioning, the first 40 days, you don't say the person's name <laughs> so that they can right. become seated, so that they can yeah. transition and travel. After the 40 days, then you can call their name. To, to acknowledge as a sense of remembrance in terms of doing the work to be there to do prayer. So and even the other thing that happens sometimes is that they can still resolve issues of the physical world in the ancestral world. So you can speak to, ask for, to resolve this issue, even if it's your, within your own family, if you want to, you know, even within our own family. So calling their name mm -hmm. is... They're still alive. They're still, they remember. You give them power. You give them energy. Just like we want to yeah. be remembered. It is so, right, so it, Carl, this thing is so real. And yeah. I hope my brother don't mind. I'm not going to call the name of which brother it was. Two weeks he called me excited. James, um, he usually don't call me with his dreams. He said, Mama slapped me last night, the, the root lady, Mama, our grandma. And, and I got angry. She said, she slapped me so hard, I woke up out of my sleep. I said, Mama, why did you slap me? And I said, she's trying to get your attention. Because when she comes, she's warning you of something. A week later, for the first time in his 81 years, he got stopped by the police for drunk driving. He had left the party, stopped by the road to urinate, hit in his car, got jammed. Somebody called the police. They smelt it on him. And he was so broken. But I said, I told you when Mama comes, He's telling you be aware, because she says, you're not acting like the child I raised. And he was disturbed, and I tell him, she comes to tell you, if there's something in your path, you must stop and think and be aware, and you can avoid it. But if you don't, you will crash into it. I mean, I live by them. They've taken me through so much. When I roll with these ancestors, I roll with an army. Anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, that is deep. And that's, yeah. That and that's why just as important to, just, that's why it's just as important to focus on the relationship with the living. Mm -hmm. It's just as important to focus on relations with the living as those who have, 
who are recently or who are departed. Sometimes we also yeah. even more so, sometimes I think that we have a sense of escape. If I want to deal with the ancestors, let me just deal with the ancestors. When you need to deal, you are becoming an ancestor. We are becoming ancestors. So we have yeah. to deal with the physical reality to deal with the spiritual reality. Absolutely. To help our people to heal. And that's right. another segment talks about with us with the behavior and dealing with the trauma and dealing with the family issues. We have to, you know, begin to resolve and restore our greatness. And it's through acknowledging our ancestors. It's through dealing with our personal development and challenges that we'll persevere and grow and succeed and truly liberate as African people. All right. Sister Alma, thank you. Professor Small, thank you. Brother Tony, thank you. Uh, thank you, Carl. Dr. Newton, thank, thank you. you, Dr. Thank Newton. You. All right. Folks, we got to get out of here. Stay strong, stay positive, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow at 4 o'clock right here on 1450. W-O-L, where information is power. At Shell, we know from the time you get up to the time you wrap up, Good night. there's a lot of meetups, hey, eatups, and hurry ups. So come to Shell and get three things done at once. Fill up with Shell V Power Nitro Plus to help keep your engine running like new. Save up with the Fuel Rewards program and never pay full price for gas again. And snack up with in-store rewards to save even more at the pump. Make the most of the stop you need to make with Shell. And engines that continuously use Shell V Power Nitro Plus premium gas. And see full terms and conditions at fuelrewards.com. At Walgreens, we've always been a place that keeps you prepped, stocked, covered, hopeful, ready, and most importantly, safe. Get the health and safety essentials you need like masks, hand sanitizer, and household cleaners with contactless curbside and drive through pickup. Right now, buy one, get one free. Select vitamins and supplements. Walgreens, everyone's place for healthy and safe. Valid through 1031. Restrictions and exclusions apply. See Walgreens.com for details. Ugh, I have to do laundry when I get home. I have to lug all my clothes over to the washing machine. Then I get to put them in the dryer and accidentally shrink my cashmere sweater again. <laughs> Motorcycles make everything exciting. And when GEICO makes it easy to switch and save on motorcycle insurance, it's even more exciting. I'm gonna fold all my socks into little balls. Yeah! GEICO Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Introducing touch-free payments from PayPal, a safe way for your customers to pay. Simply download the PayPal app and display your own unique QR code for your customers to scan. Whether you're a market seller, I'll take two tomatoes and a cucumber. poodle pamperer, <laughs> piano tuner, or plumber, <laughs> signing up to accept touch-free payments for your business is easy. Touch-free QR code payments. No seller fees until 2021. Not applicable to PayPal here transactions. Other fees may apply. Shop safe with PayPal. It's the JCPenney Friends and Family Sale, and everyone is invited. Hurry and save up to 50% on select styles from brands you love to live in, like St. John's Bay, a a and Les Claiborne. Plus, take an extra 30% off with coupon. Easy savings for anyone and everyone. And if you're on the go, enjoy contact-free curbside pickup without leaving your car. Spread the love. Share the savings. JCPenney. Offers end Sunday, 10-4. Conditions and exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. WOL, Washington, D.C., an Urban One radio station, minority-controlled and operated, serving the African-American community for over 40 years, and worldwide at WOLDCNews.com. The views and opinions of the following show do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of News Talk 1450 WOL, Radio One Incorporated, or their management. Why is the new Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed your answer to better health and wellness? It's proven quality sleep. Any more questions? Yes, I'm always freezing, and he overheats. It's temperature balancing, so you can sleep better together. But can it help keep us asleep? It senses your movements and automatically adjusts to keep you effortlessly comfortable. So I'll have more energy for yoga. Yes, proven quality sleep is life-changing sleep. Namaste. Namaste to you, too. And now save up to $700 on select new Sleep Number 360 Smart Beds, only for a limited time. To learn more, go to sleepnumber.com. Because you're more than energy, more than bones, immunity, healthy hair, skin, and nails. You're all in one, and so are we. Meet Smarty Pants Women's Formula. 
packed with over 18 premium nutrients and omega-3 fish oil to support a more productive and healthier you. Smarty Pants, because it's the smarter way to healthier. Hello there, and thanks for tuning in to this week's show. I'm your host, Chris McKay, and I'm really happy to have you along today as we explore and discover the secrets to health, wealth, and better living. And if you're a longtime listener of the show, welcome back. We appreciate it. And if you're just joining us for the first time, nice to have you along today. I want to start by sending a big thank you out to our sponsor, Dr. Newton's Naturals. They're one of the best sources of high-quality nutritional supplements at discount prices. You can visit them online anytime at drnewtons.com. And I want you to check them out when you have a chance because they really have some great products to improve your health and the health of your family. Okay, on today's show, we're talking about vitamin D, sometimes referred to as the sunshine vitamin, but folks, here's the problem. Many of us aren't getting enough sunshine lately between slathering on those powerful sunscreens and spending more time indoors, and what it really comes down to is this vitamin D deficiency that's out there is causing an avalanche of health problems for 70% of our population, ranging from pain, loss of balance, muscle weakness, depression, increased blood pressure, arthritis, memory loss, and even a compromised immune system. And I have Dr. Michael Pincus with me today to talk about the most effective way to get vitamin D. Dr. Pincus, it's good to talk to you again. Chris, it's great to be back. Thank you. You know, many of you know that Dr. Pincus is a nationally recognized authority on natural and alternative health. He's a successful chiropractor. He's worked with top Hollywood celebrities, professional and Olympic athletes, and he continues to be very involved in some of today's top health concerns. And let's kind of start at the top, Dr. Pincus, and talk a little bit about what are some of the warning signs that you may be deficient in vitamin D? Okay, well, the part of it is how you feel. And one of the things, Chris, is being tired for no apparent reason. Okay. But on the reverse side of that, I've seen that a lack of vitamin D affects your sleep. Okay, another big sign is that your bones ache. Now, there's a lot of people listening who've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, which is a thinning of the bone. Mm -hmm. But again, a vitamin D deficiency. A big one is muscle weakness. So you try to get up from a couch, you get in and out of a car, and you're finding it more and more difficult. And that's leading to the high, high prevalence of people falling and injuring themselves. Ah, okay. All right. You know, which is a huge problem. Right, exactly. Uh, another one is you tend to get more cold, especially upper respiratory problems. Okay. Problems with blood pressure, cardiovascular problems, digestive problems, constipation, bloating, gas. Mm -hmm. It's very, very common. And if you're a diabetic, there's all kinds of data about being deficient in vitamin D, and the list goes on and on. It's a huge problem. What does vitamin D actually do in the body? What is it used for? Well, when we use the word vitamin, it's actually kind of a misnomer because vitamin D is actually a hormone. Okay. And this regulates thousands of genes in the body. Everything from pain, blood sugar, immune system, blood pressure, bone strength. Plus, vitamin D has been linked to maintaining colon health, breast, prostate, and ovarian health. But I'll tell you what, the way we're taking vitamin D is all wrong. It's all messed up. Well, why do you say that? Why is it messed up? Well, first of all, you go to your doctor and they say, yeah, I'm going to put you on a vitamin D supplement, and it's like 400 international units, which is totally worthless. Or God forbid, if you're listening right now and you're taking a multivitamin and you think you're covered, that's why you're on six or eight or ten different prescription drugs. I'll tell you that right now. Mm. Because your body is not getting enough D. The other thing is that vitamin D is an oil. You don't absorb oils in your body. They're very difficult to digest. Okay. So I've come up with my own vitamin D, which I call Dr. Pincus's vitamin D3 formula. So Dr. Pincus, what makes your fast melt vitamin D formula so unique? Well, Chris, first of all, I put 5,000 units of vitamin D3 per serving in each tablet so you can actually feel the difference. I wanted to give you enough dosage so it really goes to work. Second, I use the right type of vitamin D in my formula, which is superior and readily available so your body can digest it, and this is known as vitamin D3. And third, my formula is a fast melt tablet that's available for immediate absorption. You know, you mentioned that vitamin D is an oil. So 
How were you able to make your formula into a fast melt? Well, good question, Chris. Here's what I've done. I've worked with an advanced team of scientists, and these guys, they know their stuff, and they're using this technology to convert vitamin D, which is an oil, into a dry powder. And once they do that, they put it in this vast dissolving melt for immediate absorption and quick results that you can feel. What's some of the feedback that you're getting, Dr. Pincus, from people that are taking your Fast Melt D3? Well, I'm getting tons of feedback. You know, I've got people that email me, Here's an email from Betty, and she writes, I was diagnosed with a severe vitamin D deficiency, and she said she tried many other vitamin supplements. Okay. And then she discovered my D3, and she said she went back to her doctor, had her blood test, and her blood test went back into a normal range just within weeks. Wow. All right, folks, I want to take a moment here to let you listeners know that if you want to try Dr. Pincus's vitamin D3 formula, there's a special toll-free number for you to call. It's 1-800-476-5630. You know, Dr. Pincus's vitamin D3 formula is a fast-dissolving melt that is available for immediate absorption by your body for rapid results. And by getting vitamin D3 into your body, you're going to have a bolstered immune system, improved balance, stronger muscles, and fewer aches and pains. And just so you know, Dr. Pincus has arranged a very special offer that's only available to you listeners. So when you call, be sure to mention this program, and you're going to get a risk-free trial of Dr. Pincus's vitamin D3. Again, this is only available to you listeners, and only if you call this toll-free number. It's one 800 Four seven six five six three zero. Plus, if you call right now, you'll also qualify for an extra free supply with your order to keep for yourself or share with a family member or a friend. But you must call now because this special radio offer is not available in stores or online. So that number to call is one eight hundred. Four seven six five six three zero. And remember, folks, you have absolutely nothing to lose here because Dr. Pincus's vitamin D3 formula is guaranteed to be safe and effective or your money back. And when you do call and order, you will not be automatically enrolled in one of those monthly subscription programs. This is a one-time order. So the number to call is 1-800-476-5630. I'll give it to you again. It's 1-800-476-5630. All right, for those of you just joining us, I have Dr. Michael Pincus on the line with us today. We've been talking about Dr. Pincus's Fast Melt Vitamin D3 formula, and this vitamin D deficiency is really an epidemic now, causing all kinds of health concerns. But the issue is even if you're trying to get vitamin D back in your body, you're most likely taking the wrong type or the wrong form of vitamin D the wrong way, and maybe not even getting enough of it. And Dr. Pincus, why don't we start here by talking about, you know, why is this deficiency such an epidemic, despite all of the awareness and the products that you see on the store shelves containing vitamin D. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Seventy percent of us in this country are deficient in vitamin D. The fact is, is that your body needs vitamin D. This is a hormone that should be there, and it's not there. And the statistics show that back in the 70s when we started getting cable networks and, of course, with the Internet, we're not going outside, and most of us get no vitamin D from the sun. What makes your Fast Melt D3 formula a much better choice? Well, Chris, first of all, I put 5,000 units of vitamin D3 per serving in each tablet so you can actually feel the difference. Second, I use the right type of vitamin D in my formula. And third, I've worked with an advanced team of scientists, and they're using this technology to put it in this vast dissolving melt for immediate absorption and quick results that you can feel. Now, is your Fast Melt Vitamin D3 formula manufactured here in the U.S., Dr. Pincus? Yeah, absolutely. My formula is manufactured right here in the USA, Chris. In fact, we have a facility that is a CGMP certified lab, which means current good manufacturing practices. And this is an FDA mandated set of rules that we follow. As a matter of fact, just recently the FDA came in and did an inspection and they said, hey guys, keep up the good work. Now you mentioned earlier that there's a strong connection between 
vitamin D and diabetes. Talk a little bit about how your FastMel D3 formula could help folks that are dealing with diabetes or even at risk of getting diabetes. Well, yeah, diabetes is a huge problem. And in type 2 diabetics, what we find is that there's plenty of insulin in the body, but the insulin is not recognized by the cells. And so what vitamin D3 does is it takes that problem and it seems to fix it. Now, they've studied vitamin D3 and it's improved this insulin signature by 60%. And just to give you a comparison, the most popular diabetic drug improves at 13%. Wow. Now, let me ask you this, Dr. Pincus. How 